Hey everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to RNG abuse honey trees in Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. This process is going to cover both putting the actual Pokemon onto the tree and then RNGing the Pokemon that is then on the tree. This is because honey trees use their own unique encounter slots and once the tree is shaking and there's a Pokemon on it, it will always be the same Pokemon every time. Uh, in game, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need the coin flip application on your Poketch. You're going to need a chat out with a recorded chatter. In my case, I have two. And you're going to need some sweet honey. Uh, did I use all of mine? I might have used all of mine. But, uh, yeah, you can buy him. You can buy it from the man in Floroma Town. Out of game, you're going to need Poke Finder by Admiral Fish. This is the main window. You're going to go into the Gen 4 stationary tab, and you're going to click Generator. Uh, you're also going to need Eon Timer, and you're going to be in the Gen 4 tab. You're going to need the spreadsheet I made, which documents all of the Honey Tree and Counter Slot information for Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. You're also going to need to go to this Honey Tree article uh, by uh, Dragonfly Cave, where you can find out which Honey Tree you have. And then if you're even more confused from this guide, this post by Wild EEP is where I found virtually all of this information. Uh, so those are the resources out of game you're gonna need in order to do this RNG. With that said, we may begin the video. Okay, so first thing we're gonna talk about is how to make the Pokemon we want appear onto the tree. And this is different from normal RNGs because honey trees have their own encounter slots. Um, and it's independent of the Pokemon's uh, stats. Uh, so, first we're going to talk about normal trees, then we're going to talk about Munchlax trees. My example is going to be done in Diamond and Pearl, but I do have the information for Platinum listed as well. Uh, now, the encounter slot is determined in two values, and it's determined subsequently. So as you can see, it's columns and then rows, right? Column is what is determined by the game first, so first, the game will pick if you're on column 1 or 2, or the third column option is uh, fail, which would be a 0 to 9 value. And I'll talk about these values in a minute. For the Munchlax trees, there's columns 1, 2, and the Munchlax column, uh, column, and then there's also the fail column. Fail just means a no Pokemon will appear on that tree. Uh, failing is actually relatively uncommon. Uh, so, then what's determined after that is which row you get. The row will then determine the Pokemon. So let's say column one is decided for you first by the game, then row three. That means a combi will spawn for you there. Uh, now for Munchlax, what's interesting is that Munchlax's row value actually does not matter at all. So you don't have to get a specific row for Munchlax. All that Munchlax needs is the column manipulated for it. But as you can see, the, col the column and the rows, uh, next to them I have a bunch of numbers. How do you arrive at these numbers? Well. These numbers are decided by the lower half of the PID value for method one on any given seed. So as you can see, I've got a seed typed into here. Um, anyone can hit this seed, it's gen four, so it's not like tied to your DS settings or whatever. The lower half is the right four digits of the PID. So uh, for example, if we were on method one frame 46 of this seed here, the F60D portion of this PID would be used to determine our row, okay? So, uh, how does F60D translate into our row value? So let's assume we're not on a Munchlax tree, okay? So, on a, a normal tree, the first thing we're gonna do is open our calculator in programmer mode and click the hex button and then type F60D in, right? then convert that to decimal just by clicking the decimal button. Then this gets divided by 656. And this a remainder here is what determines whether or not, or which encounter slot we've gotten. So again, we're on this frame for method one right now. The 96 means that we get column, oh, whoops, did not mean to move that. The 96 means that we get column number one because it is between the values of 30 and 99. Then the frame immediately after is what determines the row value. So the 38F9 here is what would be determining our row value. So we're in column one. Oops, take clear. So 38F9. 
decimal, divide that by 656, we get a 22. 22, if we look here, is row 3. So that means we're, we would get a combi if we were on frame 46 uh, for method 1 of the seed. We would get a combi to spawn there. Because the first value returned a 96 remainder, which is between 30 and 99, which is our column 1 value. And the second one returned a 22 remainder, which is the row 3 value. Uh, and that's simply how the encounter slot works. I know it seems kind of confusing at first, but it's uh, very useful. Uh, now, if we were the frame before with the 0008 here, as you can see. So uh, you can't type zeros in the calculator mode because it doesn't matter. So just type 8, convert that to decimal, divide it by 656. That returns a 0. Uh, I don't have it written down here, but 0 to 9 on a normal tree is fail. That means no Pokemon would spawn if uh, for this frame ever, no matter what the subsequent value here is. That means no Pokemon would ever spawn there. Okay. And so that's just how encounter slots are determined for the normal tree. Uh, for the Munchlax tree, pretty much everything is the same. Now before I talk about how Munchlax is generated, uh, I'm going to be talking about what's the deal with Munchlax trees. Now many people may be familiar with this, but if you're not, um, Munchlax can only have uh, be on three or four trees in the entire game. There's a chance that it'll actually only be on three uh, because of uh, I don't know if it's a bug or not, but there's a small chance that you'll only have three Munchlax trees. So out of the 20 odd so trees in the entire game, four of them will be Munchlax trees. And this is determined by your trainer ID and your secret ID. Your trainer ID is easily available on your trainer card. Um, your secret ID is not visible, it's a hidden value in the game. However, um, you can RNG your trainer ID if you're starting a new game. I have a video on that if you want to check it out. Or uh, you can use an action replay to view your trainer ID or um, there's a very lovely feature here, uh, ooh, wrong thing, uh, in Pokefinder, if you click the Gen 4 tools, there is IV to PID, so this is if you catch a natural wild shiny, you can then deduce your secret ID from it, or you can deduce your secret ID from a chain shiny. Um, I don't have any videos covering that, but uh, it works like, uh, it works from, um, so those are the, ooh, four methods to finding out your shiny uh, hackless. I'm going to pause. Okay, so to find out your Munchlax trees, you're going to be using the Honey Tree uh, calculator from uh, this website, from Dragonfly Cave. So my trainer ID is 15639. Generate my Munchlax trees. Now, it actually does matter where your Munchlax trees are, uh, or any trees technically. So, in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, wandering NPCs uh, advance the frame every time they, they, um, they move if their path is not pre-planned. This can be very difficult to work with, uh, because it will be randomly advancing the frames every time your game isn't paused or something like that. So the way uh, you prevent this is by using these trees here. Floroma Meadow, Valley Windworks, Fuego Ironworks, and Route 205 North, this is the honey tree right next to Eterna City. These are the trees that don't have any NPCs you have to worry about at all. If your Munchlax is not on one of these trees and your primary goal is to RNG Munchlax, um, you're going to have it in for a rough time. There are a few more routes listed here um, that can be stopped by the Versus Seeker. So if you use the Versus Seeker, sometimes if it's a randomly wandering NPC, they won't be moving anymore. Um, and so you can use it there. So if your Munchlax trees is here, you actually might have like a, a bit of a saving grace. So what I would recommend is just looking for a, if you're going to be starting a new game for this, I would recommend just looking for a trainer ID that um, has one of the Fuego Ironworks, Floroma Meadow, Valley Windworks, or Route 205 North as the uh, Munchlax tree. And you can just type in like random trainer IDs or whatever uh, in order to like find, right, a good Munchlax tree. Um, again, you could even copy my trainer ID, which is 15639, which has a uh, Fraggle Ironworks, which I did not RNG. That was just completely random. This is my original Pearl save file from like 2007. So <laughs> uh, I just got lucky with that. Uh, so now that we know where our Munchlax trees are, let's get into calculating the Munchlax trees themselves. So the only thing that is different about the Munchlax trees are Instead of 0 to 9 being a failure, like a normal tree would be, 
zero spawns a munchlax. Uh, and one to nine is what spawns failure uh, as a remainder value. Now, zero will always spawn a munchlax. So this is very nice in that normally, so as you can see, to get this combi here, we needed both frame 46 and frame 47 to be correct to get the specific Pokemon we wanted, right? Because if it was not a 22 to 39, and it was a 10, we would have gotten a Burmy, and we would have had to look for another frame that had, you know, two sequential frames, right? But for Munchlax, just the one frame that we want needs to be right. So all we need is to find a frame that can return a zero. Now, since this is Gen 4, and um, anyone can hit any of these seeds, um, the seed I'm using right now, which is a 4C11152F, I'm going to paste that in the description and in this document. Actually, I'll add it to this document uh, right now. Let's see. Um, this seed on frame 45 has a Munchlax frame. So the Munchlax frame is 45. And again, this is because this returns a zero, right? So if we take um, if we take it, right, you just do 8 in hexadecimal, convert it to decimal, divide it by 656, we get a remainder of zero. That will spawn the Munchlax column which is very useful. And the rows, they don't matter for Munchlax because all rows will produce Munchlax, which is excellent for our purposes. Um, so that's how you spawn the Pokemon that you want, as long as you know your Munchlax trees and, or not. Um, the other thing that's different about Munchlax trees is the values for column one and two are actually reversed. So as you can see on a normal tree, column one is way more common. Uh, it will be more common on... Uh, more PIDs because the value of the remainder is 30 through 99 uh, versus column uh, 2 which is 10 through 29 so that's actually only like uh, like this is like almost twice as many values here um, but on a Munchlax tree column 2 is actually more common and uh, in Diamond and Pearl anyway uh, column 2 has uh, a few more it doesn't have more rare Pokemon but it's got exclusive Pokemon to column 1 right column 1 has Apom column 2 has Heracross so those are like some kind of standout picks, uh, right? And uh, it also has Combi way more common uh, on row 66, on row one, which is 60 through 99, uh, compared to some of these other ones, which is only like, you know, 10 or 20 values, right? Um, so I would say Munchlax trees, obviously, they're better for Munchlax. And in general, if you're doing it randomly, a Munchlax tree will fail to produce a Pokemon less. Uh, but. They are more useful for Combi in Diamond and Pearl, and they uh, uh, are the only way you can get Heracross. Uh, Apom also seems to be a little more common than it would be otherwise, uh, but that's it. Um, now, so this is good. You can use this seed to get a Munchlax. Uh, uh, you can use this seed right here. You can just copy and uh, paste it to get your own uh, Munchlax tree. Now, how do we do that? Well, we just hit the, the uh, seed like normal, so we're gonna copy this seed in seed to time. So let me open up seed to time. It's in the main window of Pokefinder, right? Paste your seed into here. You can leave the year blank or whatever. Um, type in seconds. I always do 23 just because it's the lowest value. Click which one you're aiming for oop, and hit generate. Oh, also I keep the plus minus delay at like 20 and I keep plus minus seconds at like five. Generate. So this is the seed we're going to be aiming for. Um, and <clears throat> this is just convenient to aim for this for Munchlax because the finding a PID with the value that will produce Munchlax is kind of rare. Um, for anything else, right, finding, you're going to be able to find a value for all of these encounter slots on every seed, right? So you don't have to use this seed, and if you're not going for Munchlax, I think there's no reason to use this seed. Just use literally whatever seed like pops, you know what I mean? Just search for a spread for a Pokemon, uh, for actually RNGing its stats and shininess and such, and then just look for, um, just look for a Pokemon on, like just look for a, uh, the encounter slot on that actual seed instead. So you can practice hitting it and stuff. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is that this uh, seed should be method one, when, but when you're encountering the Pokemon, it's going to be method uh, J. So anyway, back to seed to time. Uh, nope, this one. So in seed to time, it's going to tell you a date and time to set your DS to, and it's going to tell you a delay to put into Eon Timer. 
calibrated delay in Diamond and Pearl should always be around 600. Mine is at 609. The uh, target delay should be 5043, which is what it's going to tell you. And uh, that's over here. Now, again, in these games, you can only hit even or odd delays. The only two ways to change between even or odd delays are if you're on an old DS, you can put a GBA game that is compatible with the PAL park in to switch to the other delay that you're not hitting, or you can change the year. So as you can see, if I made the year uh, 2021, this would be an even delay. So it drops down to uh, zero 02. So you can just do either one for hitting the delay that you're trying to hit uh, if you end up not hitting an odd delay, which this specific seed is. And set the target seconds to 23, which is what I do here. Now the only thing in game you're going to be needing are the uh, chat out with the recorded chatter, the coin flip poke app, and honey to slide of the trees. The chat outs are going to be used to advance frames one every single time you view its chatter, and you use its pitch to keep track of where you're going to. You're going to want to stop one frame before your target frame. So in our case, we're going to stop frame 44. So Munchlax will spawn on frame 45. If we stopped on frame 45, the frame 46 Pokemon would spawn. So that is the only thing to keep in mind for the in-game purposes. So, to actually RNG the Pokemon, we're going to set the date and time as it's set in uh, Time Finder. Um, so I've set it to 1 1 uh, 2020, and I'm going to start Aeon Timer the same time that I uh, hit A to save the, time on, the date and time on my system clock. Now keep in mind that in Eon Timer, it says minutes before target 2. So our target frame is uh, 52, so we're actually going to start the timer on 50. Now the only thing you're going to have to do here is hit the uh, boot the game up at the correct second when Eon Timer finishes counting down. Um, so that's all we're going to have to do for this part. So once the timer finishes counting down, we're going to boot the game up and we're going to mash uh, through this screen as fast as possible until we get to the save file select screen. And at this point, we are going to wait again and we have to get down to the quarter second accuracy here in order to load the game up with the proper um, uh, delay. Uh, now, um, to know if a game would change the delay from even to odd, it would show up here with the Imp the migrate button. Um, I'm using a Japanese Perl. It doesn't matter if it's English or Japanese. This is just the game I chose to use. Um, now on top of that, um, the things we have to consider are if you have any interesting things in um, the journal. So if you have any journal where you caught a Pokemon, that would actually advance your frame by two for every journal uh, page you have. So if your current journal page is displaying that you've caught a Pokemon recently, then um, you're actually going to get some frame advances from that. So it would be best to um, keep that in mind. Uh, because we're going for a high frame, it's fine, but it might confuse you with the chat out pitches, and uh, nobody wants that to happen. <laughs> um, I think those are the only real things to keep in mind. Um, just make sure you have Honey, make sure you've got the Coin Flip app, and make sure you've got your chat out or chat hots. I'm using two chat hots, so that's the only thing to keep in mind there. And we just wait for the timer to count down. So once it counts down, we load the game and we get ready. Now, of course, you verify you're on the correct seed with the coin flips. So you can see heads, heads, uh, tails, and I'm probably going to be uh, well within the range. So I'm very confident I'm on the correct seed uh, since the first three are correct. And I'll use chat dots to confirm the rest. So we're at the point where we're just trying to make sure that we are on the correct frames. Uh, so we verify with chat dots uh, and we use them to advance as well. So as we can see, we're on frame one and we can use the chat out pitches. So as you can see, it says like mid high, mid low. So we use that noise to verify that we're on the correct frame and then we just use it to count. Uh, make sure you don't advance to the frame you want, but the frame before the frame that you want. And just use the pitches to keep track that you're on the correct frame, that you don't accidentally skip two or one or anything like that. Um, I use two chat outs just because it's wicked fast and that's it.
Once you're sure that you're on the right frame, back out and slather that tree with honey. Now, if you're in an area with moving NPCs, you want to match the A button really quickly. Um, otherwise, you don't have to worry about uh, being fast. Once that's done, save and come back six hours later to actually RNG the Pokemon that's on the tree. So RNGing the Pokemon that's on the tree is actually very simple. You can follow my stationary guide for that one. Um, it just uses method J uh, in a normal stationary and you stop one frame before your target. But I am going to do a brief overview of that here uh, just as a refresher. But uh, if you want a much more in-depth version of this, go watch my Gen 4 uh, stationary RNG guide. So we're going to click uh, Pokefinder. We're going to click Gen 4 stationary. That'll bring us back to the tab we were at before. But we're going to click the search your function now. Now, if you want that Munchlax to be shiny, you're going to need to know your secret ID. I've covered a little bit before, uh, but you could just RNG abuse a trainer ID or secret ID so you know what they both are so you can find a good shiny frame. Uh, if you don't care if it's shiny, um, then you could just RNG for stats or something like that. Um, now, um, here you can fill out any search parameters you want, which are just um, what IVs do you want, like in what are the IV ranges you're willing to take, what's the natures you want, what's the ability slot that you want, um, what's the gender that you want, stuff like that. Min delay versus max delay. Min delay for diamond and pearl should always be 600. The maximum delay is basically how long you're willing to wait. I usually set this around 10,000. The min frame should just, it just, minimum frame will just always be one. Uh, but max frame, um, it's basically just how many chat out flips you are willing to do. Now, once you find a seed with a low frame, uh, I'll take this one here, right click it and hit generate times for seed. That's going to bring up the seed to time window. Again, I like to check the box and set the seconds to 23. That's just the seconds I like to use. Hit generate. Now for the delay, you're going to type that into Eon Timer's target delay box. Everything else you can actually keep the same as before. For calibration, set plus and minus here to 20, and then these two plus and minuses to 5, and then hit the generate button. Once this is all done, you're going to copy this seed and paste it in the generator tab. Paste it here and switch it to method J and hit generate. This is going to show that your shiny frame, uh, in my case, it's a frame on uh, 23, and it's going to be Jolly Munchlax. That's very cool. Uh, once you've got everything set up, we can go ahead and move in game. The first thing we need to do is make sure we actually got the Munchlax, or whichever Pokemon you're aiming. So, um, it's six hours later, and now we just have to make sure that the Pokemon that we wanted to spawn on the tree is actually there. Now. A uh, thing to keep in mind is if the Pokemon you didn't want to spawn, uh, or a Pokemon that you didn't want to spawn is there, you can just calculate uh, potentially nearby PIDs to see what frame you might have hit. Um, so check the frame before, check the frame after, make sure there's no NPCs in the area that you or that you accidentally didn't advance too many frames. As you can see, I got the Munchlax to spawn, which is very good. Um, but now that we know that the Munchlax is there. All you have to do is uh, reset your game and we can do the actual RNG part. So the actual RNG part is uh, fairly easy. It's just going to be setting the date and time that we recently found in seed to time again. And uh, just hitting the right second and delay. Um, I'm just going to let this play out. There's not too much to talk about. Um, again, uh, the only thing I can think of is if you've got the wrong... Uh, Pokemon on the tree just really try and use like the nearby PIDs to try and figure out what potential encounter slot you accidentally hit and why you were a frame or two early or something like that make sure you're on one of the safe routes and if you're not that you actually did stop the trainers with um, the uh, versus seeker uh, other than that uh, once we actually confirm that we hit the correct delay um, we'll just be able to get the shiny munchlax um, yeah
So this is the screen I was talking about there. My frame is going to be too advanced. Uh, but anyway, we're going to check the uh, proper seat uh, with the coin flips. So as you can see, I got heads, tails. So that's good enough. I will then check with chat outs to make sure I'm on the right uh, seat. But I'm going to be on frame three, as you can see, because um, the first two frames were consumed by the journal page. Um, uh, but once you get to the correct frame, um, just start the encounter with the tree. With your wiggling, probably, most likely, Munchlax tree. But you could use it for a shiny Vespa clan or something like that. As you can see, Munchlax barely changes its shiny, but um, I'm going to be catching it uh, anyway. Uh, that's pretty much it for this type of RNG. Um, I'm just going to show the capture here. Um, I hope this was helpful for everybody. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, please leave them down below. Uh, in the description will be the spreadsheet uh, that I used and um, the calculator from Dragonfly Cave. Um, I don't have, think I have anything else to say. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you uh, use this for whatever projects you're working on in this game we call Pokemon. I just want to give a big shout out to my channel members, specifically Akroma and Super Saiyan, who are at the Blist God tier channel membership. But everyone else here you can see on the screen, thank you guys very much. I couldn't continue doing this without all of you, and your support is amazing. If you want to become a channel member yourself and get early access to my videos, a special Discord chat, click the join button down below, and I'll see you guys next video.